It's champion shot, championship time in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Our Big Ten title game of the Big Ten softball tournament has finally come, and it's the one versus the three seed, Minnesota and Ohio State chasing the title. This is how we got here. 12 teams have now been whittled down to two. Minnesota going for back-to-back -back Big Ten titles in Ohio State, looking for its second tournament title since 2007. A recap of the semis. It was the long ball that was working for Minnesota. Sydney Dwyer with a couple of solo shots, and then the grand slam by Kendall Lindemann was also the difference, but the walk-off from Dwyer in the seventh pushed Minnesota to the championship game. And then in the semis between Ohio State and the Cinderella team, Michigan State. A couple of two-run homers. Lily Piper got the first in the first. And then Emily Clark with the big back, the two-run homer in the sixth. And Ohio State ekes out a 4-3 to three win in the semis. So that's where we stand with the NFCA Executive Director, Carol Brugman. I'm Lisa Bynes, and now I mentioned that Minnesota is going for back-to-back -back Big Ten tournament titles. So how much does that affect the Gophers when they've been here and done that? Well, certainly they have that championship experience to rely on and that feeling of winning. But last year they didn't win the regular season, they did win the tournament. This year they want both. All right, so let's turn it over to our public address announcer, Zach Marente with the starting lineups. Welcome to Alumni Field on the campus of the University of Michigan and the 2017 Big Ten Softball Tournament. Game number 11 will feature the Minnesota Golden Gophers against the Ohio State Buckeyes. And now, let's meet the participants the championship game. First, for the designated visiting team, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Let's meet the Minnesota non-starters. Number one, Kendall Judge. Number four, Carly Britt. Number five, Corey Vinicone. Number 10, Katie Kemmett-Muller. Number 13, Amber Fizer. Number 15, Erica Russell. Number 21, Kaylin Kruger. And number 22, Taylor Chill. And now, the starting lineup in batting order for the Golden Gophers. Leading off, playing left field, number seven, Sam Mackin. Batting second, playing third base, number 28, Danielle Pollock. Batting third, the catcher, number 23, Kendall Lindemann. Batting fourth, playing right field, number 20, Matty Houlihan. Batting fifth, playing second base, number three, McKenna Perti. Batting sixth, playing first base, number 32, Sidney Dwyer. Batting seventh, the pitcher, number 17, Sarah Grunewagen. Batting eighth, playing center field, number two, Danny Wagner. Batting ninth, playing shortstop, number 16, Ellie Arneson. The designated player is number 33, Ellie Cover. The starting pitcher for Minnesota is number 17, Sarah Grotowagen. The Minnesota coaching staff includes associate head coach Jessica Merchant and head coach Jessica Allister. And now let's meet the designated home team, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Let's meet the Ohio State non-starters. 
Number five, Spencer Sansa. Number six, Morgan Bray. Number seven, Megan Chabaki. Number ten, Andy Farrow. Number twelve, Amy Palin. Number thirteen, Bailey Sturgis. Number 16, Alex Vargas. Number 17, Cap Duval. Number 19, Shelby Hirsch. Number 23, Holly Gaston. And number 26, Lena Springer. And now, the starting lineup and batting order for the Buckeyes. Leading off, playing left field, number 11, Bree Beschel. Batting second, playing right field, number two, Alex Bay. Batting third, playing shortstop, number 22, Lily Piper. Batting fourth, playing second base, number 20, Emily Clark. Batting fifth, playing center field, number 21, Taylor White. Batting sixth, playing first base, number 24, Ashley Goodwin. Batting seven, the designated player, number 18, Maddie Moradi. Batting eight, the catcher, number three, Becca Cavan. And batting ninth, playing third base, number 47, Anna Kerr. The starting pitcher for Ohio State is number one, Shelby McCombs. The Ohio State coaching staff includes volunteer assistant coach Kayla Ledbetter, assistant coaches Jenna Hall and Amanda Buckholz, and head coach Kelly Kovac Shaley. Ladies and gentlemen, the umpires for today's game are at first base, Leah Bowen, at third base, Tanya Gary, and behind home plate, Cody Little. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise to honor America and those who protect our freedom at home and abroad with the playing of our national anthem. from getting this championship started between Ohio State and Minnesota. The Gophers will be the visitors in this game. Kendall Lindemann, you kind of wonder what more can she do, a grand slam in the semis? Uh, just every time she steps foot in the batter's box, she makes something exciting happen. And if she doesn't get the opportunity to swing the bat, she draws the walk. Just an exciting young player for the Gophers. They will face Shelby McCombs getting the start in this championship game after picking up the save in the semis. Yeah, she sure did, and they're going with the hot hand. And McCombs was warm, didn't have to throw a lot of innings. You see two innings pitch there. She's going to keep the ball down in the zone and try to get Ohio State off to a good start in the championship. She's got a solid defense behind her, a fun defense to watch. Anna Kirk there at third base made some spectacular plays in the semis. So did Emily Clark at second base. Bain White and Betchel again in the outfield. Kelly Kovac Shanley in her fifth season at Ohio State. We had talked about in the semis, the former Michigan pitcher trying to win her first championship as the Ohio State head coach. The 
the school that she played for. Jessica Allister, the head coach for Minnesota, seventh season, looking to go back to back with the Gophers. And the third in four years, this senior class started with Sam Mackin and Sarah Gronewagen as freshmen. And they won their first Big Ten tournament championship in many, many years against Michigan at Northwestern during that tournament final. Speaking of Sam Mackin, she will lead things off like she always does for Minnesota. First pitch is a ball. You mentioned this program at Minnesota. Now the expectation is winning, winning big, and winning championships. Here they are in position to add another Big Ten championship to their regular season come into today having won 24 straight, though Illinois did not make it easy in the semis. You know, and you don't win 53 games on the season by things always going your way. They certainly faced a lot of adversity, got down early in that semifinal and fought their way back. One run to Sam Mackin. She grew up a Minnesota native. This Minnesota roster up and down with a lot of Minnesota and Iowa players. She had the walk-off RBI in that game against Michigan in 2014. First Big Ten Tournament Championship in 15 years. High hopper to Piper for the first half. Ohio State's had an outstanding day on defense. They've certainly been challenged. Combs, what she does best is get a lot of ground ball outs. He misses that off-speed pitch in. And Piper with the first solid play for Ohio State. Danielle Parlick went three for four in the semis. A couple of singles, a double, and she scored a run. Parlick actually batting the best for Minnesota in the Big Ten tournament, batting 7-14. Now she's had the hot bat, some competitive, tough at bats has hit the ball hard, which means she has been on time, very balanced in the box. And that's what she can do. She can certainly hit the ball deep. And you saw there, she also can go to the slap bunt. And she also can drop a bunt and beat it out. We call that the triple threat. Bunt, slap, hit your way on base. Very difficult to defend because you don't know what depth to play on defense. She's got 73 hits on the year, but she strikes out. Just the sixth strikeout for Danielle Parlick on the year. A good sign for McCombs, who's really working the ball down in the zone, throwing the ball hard, mixing in her change of speeds. As you mentioned, finished the first game and took off right here where she left off in the second game. Kendall Lindemann, the number three hitter. The only hit she got, if you're going to get one, make it a grand slam. And that's what she did in the semis. Hasn't seen a lot of good pitches. Also has several walks in this tournament. And when she hit the grand slam, you know why teams are pitching around her. Everyone knows what she can do. Such a strong, solid hitter. Still finds a way on base. A slugging percentage of 9.41. And she's a freshman. Just put together an unbelievable year. The freshman of the year in the Big Ten, the Big Ten player of the year as a freshman has put together an unbelievable season for the Gophers. The 2-2.
know, tough to pitch to Lindemann. You want to hit the corners. You don't want to put it over the plate. Also don't want to walk her and put a base runner on. So foul one off. McCombs isn't shying away from her. Kendall Lindemann, you might want to think twice to pitch to her. You have to if the bases are loaded, and she'll do that. One of six home runs that we've actually seen on this Saturday. It was close, but she walked her. And that's the thing, Coach Allister, when we ask her about Kendall Lindemann, what makes her such a a tough hitter, and she said, you know, her maturity at the plate, her ability to draw walks, people are not pitching to her late in the season, yet she still is disciplined, takes the walk, and allows her teammates to hit behind her. Fifth walk of the Big Ten Tournament. In steps Maddie Houlihan, the number four hitter. Later in the season, about the middle of the season, Coach Allister flip-flopped Lindemann and Houlihan and said it was a lot of the reason why is Lindemann was walking so much and wanted to put Houlihan's bat behind Lindemann. If they're going to walk her, she wanted a hitter coming up behind her with a base runner on base. Or a bunter. Yeah. Houlihan can't beat out the throw. Minnesota shut out in its first at bat. Now it's the Buckeyes' turn. Our final game in Ann Arbor, Michigan, to the bottom of the first, Carol Bruggeman, Lisa Byington with you. We started with 12 teams, we're now down to two, the one seed versus the three seed, a single elimination format in Minnesota, going for back-to-back -back titles in Ohio State, trying to win its second Big Ten tournament title and first since 2007. Nice crowd on attendance after the number two seeded Michigan Wolverines upset it yesterday. Minnesota came to the plate in the top half. It's Ohio State's turn. Lily Piper had a two run homer in the semis against Michigan State. She had quite a day against Michigan State, as you can see there, and she's really had quite a season. My unofficial vote for the runner up for Big Ten Player of the Year, Kendall Lindemann, of course, in Minnesota earning that, but has hit the Big Ten by storm this season. And we see the start here with Sarah Gronewagen in two Big Ten tournament appearances. No hits in nine innings pitched. Of course, she almost had the perfect game in her debut in the quarterfinals against Northwestern. In this game, it's Bree Betchel leading things off. It's Betchel and Anna Kirk who switch in the one and nine spot. Like good pitching, you're in for a real treat. Oh, that's for sure. Sarah Gronewagen, one of the best pitchers in the country. And Betcher will get a chance after being in the nine spot to lead off, rewarded for her good performance in the semifinal. Every opponent taking on Sarah Gronewagen, take notes. What is the key to hitting against Sarah Gronewagen? Well, I think every team in the country has been trying to figure that out. You know she's throwing stri strikes, get a lot of swings in. That's what gets another swing in. You know, some people might say she throws so many off-speed pitches, you could sit something fast and only swing at something fast and sit something slow, only hit something slow. But that only gives yourself, now you cut your strike strike opportunities and swing opportunities in half against a very efficient pitcher. The one, two to Betchel goes fishing. Lindemann makes it official. One batter, one strikeout. And she can do it in a variety of ways. You know, she can throw the ball through all four parts of the zone. And most importantly, can throw the off-speed pitch. And you'll ask any great pitcher out there, they throw a lot of strikes, but they get a lot of swings and misses at non-strikes. And you can see Sarah Gronewagen with the strikeout on a ball in the dirt. 
these two teams haven't met each other in the regular season. So for these Ohio State batters like Alex Bain, this is their first time this year facing Sarah Gronewagen. Very difficult. Even though you've studied film and you know what's coming, it's a lot different when you're in that batter's box. Bain connects. Lost her footing. Making the grab is Sam Mackin. She tripped, she stumbled, and she still squeezed it home. And she's got a big smile on her face. How about that athleticism by Sam Mackin? Gets a good read on the ball, but trips, almost falls, but extends her glove at the last second and finds a way to make the catch. Talk about wanting to make a play for your team. In this sport, it doesn't have to be pretty, Lisa. You just have to find a way to make the play. Looks like a catch in the scorebook, our BTN standout. Presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Now two outs in this inning. <laughs> Lily Piper's numbers against Michigan State. That's one thing about Sarah Gronewagen. Everybody knows about her off-speed pitch. You can throw it on any count. It's very effective. But when she throws her curveball, screwball combination, working in and out, the ball has a little bit of upspin on it as well. Just a natural upspin. So you see a lot of foul balls, a lot of swings and misses, a lot of fly balls. Ground ball to Parla. And the side is retired in order. Sarah Gronowagen with one strikeout. Fans wearing all kinds of different Big Ten colors. Taking in the championship game. No score after the first at bat between these two teams. This is McKenna Partain. She's the other freshman. It's not, not many people have the opportunity to make any watch lists or player of the year lists or whatever it might be, but Minnesota had not one but two freshmen, McKenna Partain, Kendall Lindemann, a part of the top 25 finalists for the NFCA Shut Sports Division I Freshman of the Year. Now Lindemann has made the top 10 list. And they are first. And going into the semifinal game, third in terms of batting average. Now they're first and fourth on this team. The 2 2 on Partain. Strikes her out. Combs throws a beautiful off-speed pitch. Gets Partain swinging way out in front of the ball. You're going to see Combs take a little off this pitch. And look at the location. Turns the ball over, gets that drop spin on the ball. So not only did the speed of the ball fool Partain, but the location of the ball down and in the dirt. Sydney Dwyer, the semifinal hero, is at the plate. Two home runs in the semis against Illinois. And you know, one went into the baseball field. Lisa, and I don't know how far that shot is, but that, that was a monster shot with an exclamation point on it. And you saw her RBI total at 74. Kendall Lindemann. Her RBI total is at 74. They are tied for the single season RBI record at Minnesota. Shannon Beeler also with 74. And that puts them at the top three in the country in terms of RBIs. That's what's made Minnesota such a tough team this year. They're so balanced. A, a good defensive team, not an outstanding one, but outstanding in the circle 
and hitting. Ground ball through the five, six hole. Second base runner for Minnesota. Dwyer, you just get that feeling she can't wait till her next opportunity. Seeing the ball so well, stays balanced through the zone, finishes her swing, finds the five, six hole to get her way on base. Here's the pitcher, Sarah Gronaway. A special senior year. Has drawn a few walks in this Big Ten tournament. Minnesota won the outright regular season title. Sarah Gronaway again was one of the first to say the championship was not won by us, but all the players that created a championship culture, especially in the last five years under Jessica Allister. You know, and every time, everything you read about Sarah Gronaway again, every time we've had the opportunity to visit with her, she is just such a team player, one of the most humble players you'll ever meet. Coach Allister loves her work ethic, her leadership, has all those intangibles. Ground ball to Anna Kirk. Looking to turn two, Emily Clark. And the throw is not in time. I'm not sure why Ashley Goodwin came off the bag there. Not sure if she lost track of the outs, but they got a good opportunity to turn two. But Clark went to turn it. Goodwin was already off the bag at first base. You can see here the ball gets hit hard, goes right to Kirk. Turns and throws it to Clark, who throws the good one, but she's already come off the bag. If she would have stayed on the bag and had a stretch, they would have had an opportunity for two. Here's Danny Wagner with a 2-0 count. Well, so far, McCombs has been able to work her ball down in the zone, work her off-speed pitches. Even the one base hit she's given up was a ground ball. It was just right in the 5-6 hole. So, so far, she's been able to keep the ball down, prevent the extra base hits, work her off-speed in. She's pitched a nice game so far. We're not through the lineup yet with Minnesota, but she kept him at bay. Have you found out when she started wearing the glasses? We were talking to her family. I was talking to her mom and dad. Happened to know their family very well and said she just had an issue with her uh, with her contacts, has some sort of reaction right now to her contacts. Didn't know why, she's been wearing them a long time, but she's worn the glasses the majority of the season. A full count now to Danny Wagner. And a walk. Second of the game for McCombs. Now you want to keep attacking the zone against Minnesota. They hit one through nine in the lineup, as we've mentioned earlier, in their semifinal game. There's no relief. So if you give them an extra base, it gives them another opportunity for an RBI. As a team coming into this game, they're batting 351. Almost 390 RBIs. <laughs> 525 hits coming into today. Tack on another to make it 526. And 64 home runs for the year. They've been able to put up a lot of numbers on that board, not only in the hits department, runs, RBIs, home runs. They're just getting it done on offense. That's a big reason why they're at 53 wins on the season. 
First in the team, or first in the country to get to 50. McCombs fielding her position. Still no score between these two. McCombs shutting out one of the top offenses in the country. But leading off for the Buckeyes, it'll be Emily Clark. She went long ball in the semis. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Good hand washing protects you and can slow the spread of the virus. Use soap and warm water. Be sure to wash both sides between your fingers, fingernails, thumbs, and wrists. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. Wash early and often. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. From the diamond to the field, everywhere else in between, we keep you up to date on everything going on around the Big Ten. This week in the Big Ten, Sunday at 10.30 Eastern on BTN. The regular season has flown by. This Big Ten tournament has flown by. Selection Sunday coming up. Minnesota will be in. Question is, will Ohio State? And how many Big Ten teams could get in? Got Minnesota, Michigan for sure. I believe Illinois for sure at a 27 RPI. Ohio State, 35 RPI. They can. Clark seeing it well. Sam Mackin seeing it better. She's doing gymnastics in left field tonight. Well, she certainly is, and she's earning a perfect 10. With every play she makes, that ball was absolutely roped. Emily Clark seeing the ball so well. This pitch off Gronewagen up in the zone, but over the plate, and Mackin tracks it very well. One of the hardest balls to catch for an outfielder is a line drive. The advantage for Mackin, a little bit of an angle for her. She's able to make the play. She stuck a couple of landings out there. Taylor White at the plate, 0 for 3 in the semis. One of the ways to beat Sarah Gronawagen and really this whole Minnesota team is to find a way to limit your strikeouts. You know, Gronawagen averages double digit strikeouts per game. So far, the Buckeyes only one strikeout. Of course, this is the fifth batter faced, but if they can continue to put the ball and play hard, you have an opportunity. White gets a hold of it. A couple of fly ball outs in this inning. We have seen some fantastic defense here throughout the tournament. Well, we certainly have. We see Mona Morano from Michigan. How about the play of the pitchers with Wonderly, the flip. Lots of action, double plays, smart defense, thinking ahead. Ruby Rivera with the athletic play. Danny Wagner lays out. Emily Clark. And the final out, Sam Mackin. As they say, defense wins championships. You've seen a lot of it. But it's true, you know, your, your offense can have a night where they're hitting the ball well, seeing it well, as Ohio State is right now, but Minnesota are able to come up with a better defensive play to negate the good hits. Strike call on Ashley Goodwin. Sarah Gronawagen in her career has not faced Ohio State. The two teams met once her freshman year in 2014 in the Big Ten Tournament semifinals, but she didn't make a pitching appearance. Minnesota won that game 9-0 in the run rule. We talk about Kelly Kovac-Shanley showing them some scout video. 
It's against every other team in the Big Ten. Goodwin strikes out. Number two for Sarah Gronawagen tonight. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities, discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Postseason honors are in, the votes are in, and Minnesota swept them all. As they should have, easily won the Big Ten regular season, and these three are a big reason why. Kendall Lindemann, player and freshman of the year, Rona Wagon, the pitcher of the year, and of course, Jess Allister, the coach of the year. We'll go at it again here in the third, no score. Sam Mackin, second at bat. Talked about this offense, how good it is, already setting records for walks this year on pace to break a team batting average. Mackin had an outstanding offensive year numbers wise last year. Talk about their offensive numbers and setting school records and just what they've been able to do across the country. Second in scoring on base percentage, third in batting average, fourth in slugging percentage in the nation. And she gets walked to add to that team total. It's good discipline at the plate by Mackin. Fierce competitor in the leadoff spot. And Shelby McCombs, who's had a walk in each inning, was able to work out around it in the first two innings, but neither one of those were leadoff walks. You know, Minnesota, not a team that steals a lot of bases. Well, they only have 41 on the season. When you think about all the base runners they've had, that's a pretty low number, but. Becca Gavin behind the plate. And her ability to throw out base runners has been very helpful to Ohio State all season. Mackin is a perfect four for four if she wants to take a try. Jessica Allister has always told us it's very situational. Not always needed. Especially with the offense she has this year and their ability to drive in runs, hit the ball hard. one count on Danielle Parlett. Becca Gavin has a gun. We saw that in the semis. You take a couple steps off of second base and she could throw you out. Oh, there's no question. You, know, you got a catcher like that who likes to throw base runners on. They, they hope the runner takes off, you know. They, they want to give it a try. See, we got a timeout now. Quite a few balls being thrown by Shelby McCombs. We didn't see that a lot in the first two innings. She did have a walk in each inning, but was able to throw a lot of strikes and create a lot of outs. So going out to talk to her pitcher, as you know, she earned the save in the semifinal. Got the start here in the final, so she's thrown a few innings, and her coach is going out and talking to her about how they want to work this situation. Again, we're in the top of the third, and Minnesota, though the better seed, they're the visitors in this championship game. Ohio State, Kelly Kovac, Shane Lane, the home team. Minnesota have been the home team twice in this Big Ten tournament, so they're the visitors here in the title game. Parlick didn't quite know how to handle that pitch. What a pitch there, a hard ball coming about 66, 67 miles an hour in on her hands. 
committed a little early, had no chance to take a quality swing. Oh, she got her looking. A strike him out, throw him out. Mackin gets gunned down at second. Well, we just talked about defense a little bit ago. How about this for Ohio State? My favorite double play in the game. Strike him out, throw him out at second base. Emily Clark gets there in time. What a throw by Becca Gavin. We talked about her quality arm. She's showing it off right there. Watch the airtime from Piper Martin at shortstop after this tag. She gets off the ground. So now base is clear for Kendall Lindemann. And by the way, Danielle Parlick has struck out twice after striking out five times going into this game. Well, how about that mound visit by Kelly Kovac Shanley? You know, it, it, Combs had the leadoff walk to Mackin. She was down three and one in the count to Parlick. She calls a timeout. They decide what to do. Two pitches later, we have a double play. Most importantly, there's no one on base for Kendall Lindemann. Kendall Lindemann comes up. We have the opportunity now to pitch to her a little bit more, although it looks like Ohio State is working around her a little bit. 3-0 count. But you do not want to pitch to Kendall Lindemann. Runners on base. Walked in her first time up. Fifty-seven walks on the year. Eight walks on the year. She can get to 60 here tonight. Such good discipline at the plate, such maturity. And it's again, McCombs, you know, that could have been an unintentional, intentional walk. I want to mess with Kendall Lineman with her power, especially her home run power, sitting at 20 home runs. Maddie Houlihan behind her. The importance of the two and four hitters who sandwich Ken Kendall Zin Lindemann, 9 of 18, 500 hitting in the Big Ten tournament combined between the two hitters. in all six plate appearances today. The one hit, the grand slam, and the five walks. gets away from Shelby McCombs as Maddie Houlihan shakes it off. See, she's in her stride and it gets her in the hip area, upper thigh area, and already had kind of committed into her swing with her load step. She shakes it off and takes her base. So two on with two out. Partain at the plate. Struck out in the second. One of three Ks for Shelby McCombs. Oh, 
how big is that double play right now for Shelby McCombs and the Ohio State Buckeyes. McCombs really laboring through this inning. Got the big strike them out, throw them out from her defense. And since then, it's been a walk and a hit batter and really struggling to get out of this inning. Blew it past her. Yeah, at the same time, Minnesota having a hard time squaring the ball up. All the base runners have been via McCombs, not necessarily what Minnesota's done with their bat. So Combs still throwing the ball hard. Three and one now the count. Lindemann at second, Houlihan at first. Loading the bases with two outs. Well, not only loading the bases with two outs, you can see McCombs wiping the sweat off her face, just trying to reach back and find that extra something to get her out of this inning. But not only do you walk the bases, but you have to pitch to one of the best RBI hitters in the nation. Sixty-ninth pitch, and the seventieth coming up for Shelby McCombs. And how about the faith Kelly Kovac Shamley's throwing, showing in her pitchers? She saw it. We saw it in the last game with Ray on the mound. We're seeing it in this game with McCombs on the mound. Really believes in her pitcher's ability to get out of the inning. Hard shot right into the glove of Ashley Goodwin. And Sydney Dwyer got a hold of that one. But still, no score. One more look at it. Ashley Goodwin with the reaction to get out of the inning. These teams have already clinched an NCAA tournament bid, and Ohio State trying to keep an eye on some of the upsets going on across the country. Well, they certainly are. We have four more to add to that list. With Kent State, Montana, DePaul, and North Dakota State. The Ohio State's looking at that list hoping that the automatic bid, the conference tournament winner, goes to the number one seed of those tournaments. They currently sit at an RPI of 35, which in my opinion is a bubble position, certainly more bubble in than bubble out. But you have Minnesota, Michigan, Illinois, who in my opinion have punched their tickets. Minnesota with a 12 RPI, and Illinois with a 27 RPI, Michigan sitting with a 21. But Ohio State's an interesting conversation. They, they sit at 35 and, and certainly have the opportunity to punch their own ticket tonight with the automatic bid. 64 teams go to the NCAA tournament. Winner of this game, of course, gets the automatic bid. Maddie Marotti at the plate for Ohio State. Buck, Buckeyes made sure that they played a tough preseason schedule. Marotti strikes out for the first out. The top 12 of the RPI, Minnesota in a good position in tonight's game to host a regional. The question is, can they be good enough to host a super regional if they get that far? Well, and I think that's a stretch for Minnesota. You certainly will be hosting a regional next weekend in Minneapolis, but you gotta be in the top eight seeds to be able to qualify to uh, to host a Super Regional. That is if all the teams advance. Slow blooper to second base. Becca Gavin tried to stride it out, but Partain was there. How unusual is it for a team? Sits in the polls as the number two team in the country and might not got, get to host a super regional. Yeah, well, the, you know, the, the polls are, you know, coaches' opinions across the country, one from each conference votes. Well, the coaches' opinion, you know, they've, Minnesota has slowly and steadily risen to the top of the ranks. I think coaches appreciate the fact that winning 53 games versus losing three of them says a lot about your team. You find ways to win, but the strength of schedule has hurt Minnesota a little bit. And that's why their RPI is at 12.
Here's Anna Kirk now batting in the ninth spot instead of the leadoff spot. You know, when we're talking about regionals and super regionals, after, after the regional round, the top 16 teams do have the opportunity to host. Minnesota will be in that conversation, the only Big Ten that will be in that team that will be in that conversation. But depending on who wins the regionals. Another strikeout for one of the best strikeout pitchers in Big Ten and Minnesota history. Grona Wagon getting it done once again. No score in our Big Ten championship game between Minnesota and Ohio State. We're now in the fourth inning, and we bring in Ohio State's head coach, Kelly Kovac Shanley. Coach, your team has not faced Sarah Grona Wagon. How did you try to get them ready for tonight? We just played a really competitive preseason schedule. We saw a lot of great pitchers along the way and in the conference. And, you know, she's a great pitcher, but we've faced a lot of great pitchers, and we'll get to her. Hey, Kelly, just so impressed with your ability to know when to take your pitching staff out, when to leave them in. We saw it in the semifinal, a lot of faith in Ray. We're seeing it again here in McCombs. Just talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I don't know how long Comey's going to be able to hang on. I know she's getting tired, but I'm going to stick with her until they hit her. You know, and um, we got kids ready to go, and I'm not afraid to pull them if we need to. I, um, you know, just got to give them their chances, and hopefully they'll get some people out. All right, thank you. Thank you. You have to pull out all the stops, but she's right. Minnesota only one hit so far tonight. Yeah, we've seen so much action in this game and certainly have had a lot of base runners. Seen some great defensive plays as well, but both pitchers have been able to cut down these high-powered offense. Both teams known for their offense. In step Sarah Gronowagen. from British Columbia. Most likely would play on the Olympic team in 2020. Set up nicely for that. Softball back as a sport. The 2-0 to Gronaway pops it up. That foul ball, see that's some good camera work there by our camera crew, but you know, from many years of out recruiting, it's not about the first bounce, it's about the second bounce on a foul ball. And that ball landed closer to home plate and ended up in right field. Doesn't quite know what to do with it. <laughs> Anybody want a softball? I'm not really sure where to go with it, but I know I'm probably not supposed to keep it, but I'd like to. <laughs> One hopper to Piper. <laughs> and around the corner, young man, you get your prize. An interview with Carol Hutchins. Oh, he does get a prize. All that hard work paid off. <laughs> Good work, young man. Look how patient he is. The winner of one keychain. <laughs> He's going to have to wait about 14 or 15 years, maybe, though, to get his license. Our driven ball to center, off the wall. Danny Wagner looking for two, the head first slide, and she's in safe. Sixth double of the year. Well, Wagner connects with this pitch. 
Seeing the ball so well, drives it deep, stays in the park, but look how well White plays the ball off the fence. One hop, we've had so many close plays at second base because the outfielders are getting the ball in quickly. But you can see Wagner gets her hand in on the base under the tag. And with one out, brings up Ali Arneson. Seen too many balls hit to the outfield off McCombs. That might be the first one. He's done a nice job of keeping the ball down. Certainly the other hit by Dwyer ended up in the outfield, but it was a ground ball type hit. Second hit of the night against Shelby McCombs. Shelby Hirsch getting work in in the bullpen. Kelly Kovac Shanley has multiple choices to use. Arneson is walked. Kovac Shanley shared with us. You know, she's got a good feel for her pitching staff. She did mention that Comey, Shelby McCombs, was getting a little tired. There's those nicknames again, Lisa, we've been talking about all weekend long. And, you know, she just wants to have a real honest conversation as Minnesota's turning the lineup over right now to the top of the order. So wants to talk to her pitcher about how she's feeling. We see Shelby Hirsch is coming out of the bullpen. She's ready to go. Morgan Ray, another op option for... Coach Shanley. That's a long conversation between the head coach and Shelby McCombs. That means it's dancing time. So far tonight. The thing that jumps out at you is the six walks in three innings, two per inning. Very uncharacteristic of Shelby McCombs. Might be a sign of Coach Shanley was talking about a little fatigue setting in. Minnesota has two on with one out. Back in. Shallow shot to center. That's the speed of Taylor White chasing that down. I tell you what, that's a tough play by a center fielder who ends up at shortstop position by the time she can slow her momentum down. McCombs goes back to the off-speed pitch, gets Mackin to pop up, and it's hit in that no man's land, and Taylor White takes over. By the time she can slow down, she's taking Lily Piper's position short. Your circles are really good. Couple of strikeouts for Danielle Parlett. You don't see that line for Danielle Parlett very often. No, you really don't, mainly because she has so many tools in her toolbox. She can bunt her way on, slap her way on, hit the ball. Usually when you have that many options, if you're not seeing the ball well as a hitter, you can go to your slap. If you're not slapping well, you can go to your bunt. Huge swing. Yeah, big reason why Parlick's struggling right now. You, you got to see the ball to hit the ball. You hear it all the time. Watch her head on this swing. Spins around on a swivel. Pulls her whole body off toward first base. This is the player who was batting 714 going into this championship game in the Big Ten tournament. You know, she's really. Fundamentally, you, you want to, as a slapper, move toward the pitcher until you make contact. And you can see from some of those replays, she's really peeling off toward first base and opening up her shoulders. And it's causing a lot of swings and misses. Well, a competitive game. The way the championship should be played. One more look. Still taking an aggressive swing with two strikes. That one goes right off the toe of 
Barlick. Slaps one to Emily Clark with the fist pump. And Ohio State again getting out of trouble. 0-0 the score. Big Ten Championship game between Minnesota and Ohio State. Bottom half of the fourth as we bring in the Minnesota head coach, Big Ten Coach of the Year, Jessica Allister. You give the start to Sarah Gronewagen again. So far, a very solid performance. Let me know how she has developed from her freshman year when she played in the Big Ten Championship game for you to now in her senior year. Uh, that, that was a long time ago. You know, she's got a lot of experience under her belt from Spence. He's pitched in a lot of big moments um, and obviously has had a great career. Coach, a lot of base runners on base so far. No runs to show for it. Any changes to your offensive strategy heading into the second half of the game? No, we just got to stick with it. Um, you know, I think we um, getting runners on, getting them in scoring position, got to continue to put aggressive swings on good pitches um, and stay the course. All right. Thank you, Coach Allister. Thank you. Of course, Minnesota hoping to host a regional and a super regional as we talked about. They set attendance records at their home stadium this year with over 14,000 fans attending their home games. They actually had to add extra bleachers this year to accommodate all the fans. Bree Betchel leading things off for Ohio State. Ground ball to Partain for the first out. Yeah, well, everybody loves a winner, right? You talked about the fans packing the house at Minnesota. What, a, what an exciting time for them. Winning the Big Ten regular season championship. We've seen the development here at Alumni Field as the Michigan program started to win. The stadium got bigger and bigger. More fans got more interested. In fact, Jessica Allister said she remembered sitting in Big Ten meetings when Carol Hutchins said, you have to have a presence on campus. It's one of the most important things you can do as a softball program. Part of the way to build that presence on campus, especially in, you're in a climate like Minnesota, Michigan, is to hold postseason play tournaments, regional, super regionals. That's something Michigan has been able to do here at Alumni Field, and it's built their fan base. Well, it was something that Jessica Allister really didn't understand at the time, but she gets, I, I totally get it now. Now that I've seen the fan support and the interest, especially in a special year and a banner year like Minnesota's having this year. Bain fouls it back. Counts still one and two. Fifty-three wins. The first in the country to fifty. Fewest win or fewest losses in program history for a season was eleven. They're at three this year. Another strikeout for Sarah Gronewagon. Another strikeout with an unbelievable changeup. As you can see, she's climbing the charts to the all-time strikeout leaders in Minnesota. Really reaches for this ball. Ball drops right off the table. That changeup for Gronewagen, so effective with that location down in the zone. Two outs now. You saw she's chasing Sarah Moulton, who was a senior when Sarah Gronewagen was a freshman. This is a fun matchup to watch. Lily Piper, the best batter Ohio State sends to the play. Ground ball right back at Gronowagon. 12 straight outs for Sarah Gronowagon tonight. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Social distancing helps you avoid contact with those who may be infected with the virus. What can you do? Steer clear of crowds of 10 or more people. Keep a distance of six feet between you and others in public spaces. And if possible, work from home. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. 
tomorrow, a baseball doubleheader on BTN. First, Indiana hosts Penn State, followed by Michigan, ranked 17th in the country, taking on Purdue. Coverage begins at noon Eastern live on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go. Their conference tournament taking place in Bloomington, Memorial Day week and weekend. Plenty of good baseball here still to come. No score still between these two teams. Two hits total in this game. Part of the order up, three, four, and five. see that Ohio State and really a lot of teams across the conference now are not giving Lindemann anything middle to end side part of the plates where the majority of her power is. Every pitch has been low and away, low and away, trying to pitch away from that power. Freshman of the year and player of the year coming into the tournament. Look at her numbers and where she ranks in conference play. I mean, look at all the number ones, especially in the power categories, home run, slugging percentage, and her ability to get on base. All you need to know about Kendall Lindemann is that Jessica Allister, as we have told the story, when she hits, it sounds different. Just close your eyes and pay attention. The full count. Once again, Lindemann comes up with no runners on base. That is just the way Ohio State would like it. Certainly would love to retire Lindemann. And another walk. Lindemann has gotten that trot to first base down. Just so disciplined. That's why you see such the high on base percentage. And Kelly Kovac will take a walk to Lindemann versus a ball over the fence, especially 0-0 game here. Champ Big Ten Championship on the line. We're in the second half of the game. Three walks in this game, six total for the tournament. She's found base pass all seven times she's come to the plate. Houlihan as Clark looks to turn. And Ohio State is always looking for two. Well, they absolutely are, and that's again why you see the wise decision by Ohio State to pitch very smartly to that young lady, Kendall Lindemann, Big Ten freshman and player of the year. Then they're able to develop a ground ball out here to Houlihan. Piper stays down on it very well. That ball had a lot of pace on it. Few hops along the way. Those are the toughest balls to field if you're an infielder. Is a ball right at you. It's got a few hops in it. Brings up McKenna Partain. We talked about it earlier. Minnesota does not steal a lot of bases, but after watching Becca Gavin with the old strike them out, throw them out, it's going to deter them from stealing even more. And Partain batting fifth in the order this year. Jessica Allister is the first to admit that she could be a one or a two hitter easily on almost any team. Maybe she will be for Minnesota here down the line. Especially with the graduation of Sam Mackin. Fastest on the team. Playing in her first postseason of her career. There's Houlihan sitting at first base. Another ball to Clark. And another opportunity to try to turn two. McCombs continues to make good pitches. 
and continues to develop ground balls and is feeding her defense, who is explaining exceptionally well. Look at Emily Clark's footwork there. Fields the ball, sets her feet to second, makes sure the first out. Piper gives it a shot, not a chance for the double play, but they continue to get the lead out. And that young lady, Shelby McCombs, has pitched her way out of a lot of jams. Oh, letting it fly, Sydney Dwyer does it again! The two-run home run and her third of the tournament gives Minnesota the lead. Sydney Dwyer having herself an unbelievable Big Ten tournament. Yeah, the long ball and their monster shots. Here gets a pitch. McCombs leaves a pitch up in the zone, something she has not done today. And Dwyer makes her pay into the tops of the trees. And look at that smile on her face coming around first base. She knows she got her team on the board. That's a championship swing and smile. Two solo shots in the semis. And the two-run homer, so far the difference maker in the championship game. And she has done some favors for her teammate who's now standing in the box. Time Sarah Gronewagen steps into the circle, she will have at least a two-run lead now. And that goes a long way for Sarah Gronewagen, who allows less than four hits per game all season long. So this deficit, even though it's 2-0, when Sarah Gronewagen on the mound, it can feel like 5-0, just because it's tough to string hits against her. But Minnesota looking to build on this lead, and Sarah Gronewagen looking to do so with her bat. God. And Shelby McCombs has certainly given her all. Was a little fatigued throughout the game. Looks like we have another conversation here from her pitching coach. Gives her a high five and says, let's give the ball to your teammate. It'll be Shelby Hirsch. The starter in the semis who now gets the ball from Shelby McCombs. Shelby McCombs doing a nice job, really only two hard hit balls, but one went over the fence with Dwyer. And, you know, Ohio State does have a, a lot in their bullpen they can go to. Now they turn to Shelby Hirsch. She also throws the ball hard, as did McCombs. But you're gonna see the ball up in the zone now more. With McCombs, you saw the ball down in the zone and a lot of off-speed. With Shelby Hirsch, you are not gonna see a lot of off-speed pitches. You're gonna see a little more movement up in the zone. Shelby Hirsch has been the hot pitcher for Ohio State. And you see McCombs' numbers, four and two-thirds. Giving up the three hits, but the one biggie, the two-run homer. And as you mentioned, the eight walks are what stand out in that line. Oh, for sure, just having a little hard, a little bit of a hard time with control. Worked her way out of several jams. Finally, Minnesota able to capitalize. A pitch by committee sort of philosophy for Ohio State. They primarily use forearms. Came into today with a team ERA that was fairly low. Shelby Hirsch got the start against Michigan State in the semis. This was her line against the Spartans. Yeah, only two innings pitch, but was very effective. Ohio State likes to pitch by committee. You know, they don't have a Sarah Gronawagen, a strikeout pitcher that's dominant, so they're going to use the strengths of their entire bullpen.
It'll be Danny Wagner with two outs. The 2 out hitter. Well, because Minnesota's lineup is just so strong, one through nine, you must limit free base opportunities. They will make you pay. And here you see Wagner gets one off the inner thigh. Shelby Hirsch comes in. You want your pitcher to come in and shut the door. And Hirsch got behind quickly. And Ended up hitting Wagner now. She's got to work herself out of a bigger jam. Now it's Allie Arneson. Kirsch continues to work up in the zone. She likes to spin the rise ball, curve ball. Important for Arneson to look down in the zone. in trouble, or is she? She worked her way over to third. Well, she was in a little bit of trouble. You see a little, uh, little smiling exchange between her head coach. She gets caught leaning and she knows she's in trouble. A good throw would have had an opportunity for the out, but not a great throw by Gavin. Clark does enough to keep the ball in front. Rona Wagon with the stolen base. The last thing you want to do is make a base running error as you're headed towards third, right towards your head coach. Well, there's no question, but the only way out of that heading over to third base and seeing your head coach is when you're safe, <laughs> because then you're at least, <laughs> at least you're, you know, your, your foot's in the doghouse, but not your whole body. to Arneson. Well, no stolen base for Sarah Gronewagen, a fielder's choice to be official on that. But watch out, Sarah Gronewagen is not afraid to be aggressive on the base pass. The head first slide would have ended up being the game winner against Wisconsin, a game that went 12 innings. The walk to Arneson. To load the bases. Sarah Grunewig and thought she was going to get in trouble with that head first slide with her head coach. That didn't happen. Yeah, she had a full head of steam going into home. And as you mentioned, it was the game winner. That was a very long game for Minnesota. I don't think Coach Allister cared how they scored at that point. <laughs> we called that game. Minnesota had left a ton of runners on base. And now they've got three with the bases loaded and two outs. the amount of free bases that Ohio State has given up in this game. It's hard to imagine looking up the scoreboard, only two runs, but only three hits for Minnesota. Nine walks will help that cause, and two hit batters as well. Inside the Mackin. zone here for Ohio State. You can see Emily Clark trying to cheer her pitcher on. Just willing these pitchers to throw some strikes. Let the defense help. Here 
back and fights it off. A full count now with two outs and the base is loaded. And the runners will be in motion. So it's a little tougher for Ohio State. And for Shelby Hirsch, she's got to throw the ball across the plate or she'll walk in another run for Minnesota. Ball four. And the third run of the game. And that third run of the game becomes huge. Again, when you think about who Minnesota has in the circle right now, and Sarah Gronewagen does not give up a lot of hits, certainly does not give up a lot of runs. If Ohio State wants to give themselves an opportunity for a Big Ten championship they need to get out of this inning very soon. The head coach is back on the field. One thing I've been so impressed with and talking to Lisa about, it seems every time Kelly Kovac Shanley comes out in the circle and talks to her pitchers, which she's had to do quite often in this game, somehow her pitchers have found a way to get the next out. We'll see if that still holds true here, but always seems to have some good advice to her battery. She's been known to have the magic words, say the right things at the right time to her players. Well, she's been in that position before. It was a two-time NFCA All-American pitcher here in Michigan. So she's been in the circle. She's had an outstanding career and has had many experiences at Penn State, Miami of Ohio, and now at Ohio State. Here's Danielle Parley. Check swing. Ninth batter to the plate in this inning. Arlick flies out. Minnesota batted around in the fifth, put up three runs, and another deep shot from Sydney Dwyer. So far, it's another gem for Sarah Gronawagen, and now she is pitching with a lead. Minnesota up 3-0, our State Farm State of Success in the Big Ten Tournament through three games. Look at that line. The thing that really jumps out at you is obviously the amount of hits and as long as the strikeouts as well. One run you saw there was generated by Northwestern. Had to be manufactured in a no-hitter in the quarterfinals. Clark is more than capable of getting the hit. She lined out to Sam Mackin in her first time up. Foul. We asked Jessica Allister, did she know if Sarah Gronawagen would be a program player? You just never know when you're recruiting a high school kid what they're capable of doing. She said, we might have started to feel that way the summer of her senior year. She was good, and then she took really a step forward when that now Sarah Gronawagen changeup that we all know started to develop during that time. Well, she certainly has been a... You know, Minnesota has a proud tradition and has had many great coaches and players. Certainly Sarah Gronawagen has stepped up to that level and really made a difference the minute she put on a uniform for Minnesota and has, as Carol Hutchins said here in the booth with us earlier, gotten better every year. A shot to center, the first hit of the tournament and of the game against Sarah Gronawagen. 
Emily Clark just having a day on both sides of the ball. Tough at bats. You know, maybe that'll open it up here for Ohio State. See, she gets a pitch on the outer part of the plate. Curve ball on the outside part of the plate. Drives it right back up the middle. Well, we knew Clark was more than capable. And brings up Taylor White. White certainly has the power to go deep. Ten home runs on the season, and she's one of these many players at Ohio State that can hit for power, hit for average, and steal bases. So a good combination of speed and power to make things happen on offense. Another K for Sarah G. And that's what Sarah G can do for you, is throw the ball in the dirt and still get a strikeout. And that means two things. That off-speed pitch keeps Ohio State off balance. And you also got a tough catcher back there who can handle balls in the dirt. This one gets picked up by Lindemann with the backhand. Tries to catch it clean and does. She continues to climb the Minnesota all-time strikeout mark. Chasing Sarah Moulton. Ashley Goodwin is the next batter up for Ohio State. Goodwin lets it fly. Three Gophers chasing after it. Now two away. Yeah, that ball was in the air a long time. And you know, a lot of times players will call the ball a little bit too early, but you really want to call the ball when it's at the top, at its peak. You want to let that ball wait. You see everybody going hard for the ball as they should. And then center fielder Danny Wagner takes over, who typically the center fielder has priority over all the outfielders and over the infielders. That whole outfield for Minnesota is new this year, by the way. They graduated three seniors, Paige Polkovich, Sydney Fabian, and Kayla Winner from last year. So they had to shift around players defensively this year. The one no to Marotti. Off speed change at 55 miles per hour. Makes it so effective. It's that perfect speed where you don't have time to reload, keep your hands back long enough to put the barrel on it. And once again, that, that pitch right there is a perfect example of why Sarah Gronewagen has so many strikeouts. You know, she may throw a, a real strike or two, but every now and then, she throws the ball in the dirt. You see Kendall Lindemann hustling over to block the ball. She gets a lot of sw a swinging misses at balls in the dirt. You got to have a lot of trust in your catcher to do that, especially with two strikes. Because you can throw the ball in the dirt. The pitcher can tell you that. If you feel like you've got a good and off-speed pitch, you want to keep it down. But if you don't trust your catcher to keep it in front, it's not going to happen. She's got a good one in Kendall Lindemann. In fact, there's a big joke in Minnesota in who would win the battle if Kendall Lindemann ever went to bat against Sarah Gronewagen. Wouldn't we all love to see that? Who you got? I'd have to go with the senior in Gronewagen with the experience and her ability to pick the corners. Another foul tip. But Lindemann knows all her pitches. Still got to hit him. I think every, every team in the country knows what she's going to do. You're right. She's got the best view in the house, Kendall Lindemann does, of Sarah Gronenwagen and exactly what she can and can't do. But behind every great pitcher is also a great catcher. The 2-2. Another strikeout for Gronenwagen. Seven on the day. Another gem for the senior. Minnesota's Golden Gophers going out in style. Dwyer and Wagner from Minnesota, the only two players with hits in this game, and yet the Gophers are leading 3-0. Yeah, 
Yeah, you see a lot of activity up and down the lineup for Minnesota. A lot of it has to do with the pitchers of Ohio State who've had a hard time finding the strike zone. Kendall Lindemann is up after Minnesota batted around in the fifth and put up those three runs. Still facing Shelby Hirsch. Lindemann, one of four players in the NCAA this year, the 40-40-40 club, runs RBIs and walks. Record eight Big Ten Freshman of the Week honors this year. You know, in this situation with Lindemann, so many walks in this tournament, walks all season long. You know, it, it, some hitters get real anxious. Start, They just want to hit so bad, they start swinging at poor pitches, but not Lindemann showing great disciplines and patience at the plate. The fourth walk of the game. You know, she knows her zone. She stays disciplined in her zone. And when the ball is in her zone, she swings at it, drives the ball a long way. But hasn't seen too many pitches here late in the season. And a pinch runner from Minnesota, Kaylin Krieger. The fourth walk again for Lindemann, who, remember, walked five times to tie a Big Ten record against Wisconsin. Strike call on Maddie Houlihan. Ohio State to keep the score where it is. You know, they only have two more innings to try and get their offense on track against Sarah Grona Wagon. It's tough to score against Grona Wagon. It's tough to string hits together against Grona Wagon. So we've got to keep this score within reach. Struck out looking. A big pitch for Hirsch. Goes low and inside, hard. Gets a lot of speed on this ball, and you can see there's no chance for Houlihan. Can't pull the trigger, can't get the bat going forward. Great location for Hirsch. First strikeout for Shelby Hirsch. Kenna Partain is 0 for 2. It's been a battle all game long for the Ohio State pitchers. They've fallen behind Minnesota. Partain lets it fly. And a towering fly ball. Next up is the one with the hot bat in the Big Ten tournament, Sydney Dwyer. She certainly does have the hot bat and has a lot of RBIs for her team via the long ball against Illinois, too, including the walk off. And one, of course, today. Three home runs for the Big Ten tournament, all three coming today. two-run homer in the fifth. Gave her 76 RBIs. It's a new single-season Minnesota record. You know, 
know, we talked to her after the last game and say, why is that? Why are you able to drive so many runs in? And she said, you know, I, I actually am more relaxed when there's runners on base. I feel like they've done their job. And you can see there, ahead of Kendall Lindemann at the moment, past Shannon Dealer. I'm going to say, that's going to be a race all postseason. <laughs> there's no question. But here's the deal. Dwyer right now gets a few more pitches to hit than Lindemann. I think the impressive thing about Lindemann, she only has about 140 at-bats on the year. And, you know, Dwyer is sitting at almost 170, so she just gets more opportunities. If Lindemann hits any more grand slams, she'll be set. Well, that's very efficient. One swing, four RBIs. You know, Dwyer's got to work <laughs> a little harder than that. But you know, Dwyer certainly, you know, pick your poison there with Minnesota. Throw to Dwyer or Lindemann. Neither is the answer. And a walk to Dwyer. A two-out walk. Once again, that may have been a little bit of an intentional, unintentional walk with the hot hand of Sidney Dwyer. Sarah Gronawagen, not as tough in her at-bat. Certainly has found ways to get on base via the walk, but so far has not come up with the big hit for Minnesota today. Walked in her last time up. Sarah Gronawagen now four walks for the tournament. Half-hearted swing. Yeah, it sure was. Just you know, sometimes when you have those types of swings, you're thinking a little bit too much. Paralysis by analysis. You know, the time you're in the box, it's time to react. You do all your work in practice, and when you're in that box during a game, it's all about reacting and trusting your swing. High for the first ball to Gronaway. Ten championship game under the lights at Alumni Field. Minnesota with three nothing edge in the sixth. <laughs> Struck her out. Minnesota was threatening. Didn't get a run, but still leads three nothing. Softball on BTN is brought to you by Tire Pros. Take the hassle out of tire buying. Find your dealer today at tirepros.com. Heading to the bottom of the six. Sarah Gronawagen well in control of this one. And chasing Sarah Moulton two away from tying the all-time strikeout mark in Minnesota history. She has put her pitching coach you saw Piper Martin, she's Piper Ritter now. She's put her far away in her rear view mirror. And I don't think uh, Coach Ritter cares at all. He's happy to see her, uh, both her students there really, both of her pitchers she's helped develop throughout their careers. Becca Gavin at the plate. There is Piper Ritter, Minnesota pitching coach, as you mentioned, had the opportunity to coach both Sarahs, Moulton and Gronawagen. Both Sarahs without an H, too, for your scorecard. But they certainly have a lot of Ks, Lisa, that's for sure. Just so efficient is grown away. And, you know, she's got a full count here to Gavin, but that's a rare occurrence. Rarely does she even get to three balls. Just moves the ball through the strike zone, attacks hitters, does not allow many free passes. Strikeout number eight, and she is one off of tying the record. Does it again with this off-speed pitch down in the zone. It just bleeds down and outside. Gavin has no chance 
to hit the ball hard anywhere because of the location of the pitch. Alex Vargas will get another shot with the bat in her hand. Pinch hitting for Anna Kirk. And why not? Coach Kovac Shanley turning to her bench to try and get some offense generated here against Brona Wagon. Who's only given up one hit the entire Big Ten tournament. Swinging strike. Again, none of these Ohio State batters have ever faced Sarah Gronawagen in her career. It's tough to face her if you've seen her 10 times, let alone the first time. thing that's so impressive about Grona Wagon too. Doesn't get rattled on the mound. Competitive, but stays the same. Sarah Moulton, you've got company. Tied atop the Minnesota all-time strikeout mark. Brings up the top of the order, Bree Betchel. You know, the biggest compliment I think Carol Hutchins gave to Sarah Gronawagen was that she just continues to get better. She's She's better now than when she was as a freshman, just continues to improve every year. Now two strikes on Betchel. It's a tribute to her work ethic, her leadership, all the intangibles Coach Allister talks about. Competitive. She really makes everyone around her better. The new Minnesota strikeout leader. Sarah Gronawagen now owns it all herself. And isn't it fitting that she struck out the side to do it? Another double digit strikeout game, 15 for the year. Another double digit strikeout game for Sarah Gronawagen. And she's just done it really by keeping the ball down in the zone, also throwing the ball hard. Kendall Lindemann getting a workout, but Ohio State swinging a lot of balls in the dirt. Sarah Gronawagen's ability to change speeds, pound the strike zone, throw the ball hard, the new strikeout leader at Minnesota. 23 swinging strikes today against those Ohio State batters. Big Ten tournament showing of three games. One hit given up. 15 innings pitch and 22 total Ks. Danny Wagner at the plate. Had the double in the fourth, carries that one to left, but it's foul. And that was pretty to watch. I mean, when Minnesota has hit their home runs today, they, you know, they make you sit up in your seat a little bit because, you know, the sign says 200 in the outfield and 222, but they're hitting the ball over the scoreboard and into the baseball diamond, and they're just really swinging the bat with confidence and certainly with a lot of power. for a team that is looking for three of four tournament championships. First two have come against Michigan and the leadoff walk to Wagner. That's the 
expectation now. And once you learn how to win one championship, you won more. And you know what it feels like. You know what it takes. It takes good pitching in the circle, good defense. It takes timely hitting. And certainly Minnesota's been able to do that over the past four years, and especially this season. Arneson steps in. She's walked in her last couple of at-bats. Neil won. Ohio State pitching staff certainly throwing quite a few pitches this evening. Minnesota showing their discipline, drawing a lot of walks, a couple hit batters. Third straight inning, as a matter of fact, that Minnesota has led off the inning with a walk. Going back to the fifth. Lindemann did it a couple of times, and now the walk to Wagner. That is a loose dugout. Sure is, and a happy dugout, and why not? One Big Ten championship under their belt, closing in on a second one this season. Closing in on their 54th win of the season. Back to back walks. Minnesota opened the year with a 19-game win streak. Now 124 straight. And we might have another pitching change coming up. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's what's going to happen here. You can see uh, Shanley going out to talk to her pitcher. Looks like we're going to see Morgan Ray again. Come in, make another appearance. Morgan Ray got the W in the semis. She gets the ball now. Here's what Morgan Ray did in the semis against Michigan State. Now she enters in the seventh inning of the championship game. Yeah, pitched in the middle of the semifinal win and now has an opportunity here to try and work Ohio State out of this inning. She's one of three pitchers Coach Kelly kovac shanley has been using here in the Big Ten season. Usually they get a start each day, and so no stranger to being out in the circle. Shelby Hirsch's numbers tonight? Well, the thing that stands out, didn't give up a hit in her time out there, but six walks just had some control issues. Wild pitch for the first pitch for Morgan Ray. Runners advance. The score could be a lot worse. Minnesota has left 13 on base. Leads 3 nothing. Yeah, they certainly have. And a lot of that has to do with the pitching staff of Ohio State. Double digit walks, some hit batters, and the defense has been able to work itself out of quite a few of those innings, but Minnesota with a lot of missed opportunities in this game. Couple of runners in scoring position. That's a fair ball from Mackin. One run gets in. Another coming to the plate. Five nothing for Minnesota and a couple of RBIs for the senior. Well, this ball has eyes for Sam Mackin, and that's where these two leadoff walks will come back to haunt Ohio State. Reaches for the ball, it's a low outside pitch, but gets enough of the barrel on it to get it past Kirk, and yet inside the bag, you see wisely there, Wagner's in foul territory. So if she does get hit by the ball, she's not out, Arneson scores as well. The first hit for Minnesota with runners in scoring position in this game, if you can believe it. Mackin's first hit of the championship game. Danielle Parlick is 0 for 4. Slaps it to third. One out. Yeah, 
That keeps Mackin at second base by having the ball hit on that side of the field. And Kirk checks Mackin, no advancement there. You want to have a productive out, not a productive out by Parley. Mackin still at second base. Kendall Lindemann, part of the future. Big part of the present, but a big part of the future for Minnesota. Four walks already. The next one will tie her own record. You know, I think that's what's even more impressive about Lindemann. Her, we've talked a lot about her ability to draw walks and be disciplined in the strike zone, but the fact that she really has less official at-bats because she doesn't get pitched to, yet still has well over a 400, 430 batting average. Oh, off the glove of Goodman. Saved a run. Ricocheted off of Goodwin's glove. Man, did Littleman got a hold of that one. Certainly did. We talked about the ball sounding different coming off the bat. Lindemann barrels that one up, hits it so hard. Goodwin just can't quite come up with it. You see Mackin thinks about scoring, but holds up, no chance. Clark picks it up very quickly. A hit for Lindemann, her third of the tournament. Runners now at the corners, with Mackin advancing over to third. An 0 for 3 day at least in this game, for Maddie Houlihan. Minnesota with another opportunity to add to this lead. At the heart of their lineup, coming up. Lindemann with a single, now Houlihan, Partain. But really, when you think about this whole Minnesota lineup, they, they just have a heart through the whole lineup. They all do their job. They all find ways to score. Grand ball. Fair ball. Second out. A smart play there by Anna Kirk to get that ball before it goes foul. That may have ended up foul. And then you got a pitch to Partain again. So any out you can get against Minnesota, you see this ball, she steps up so she can feel the ball in fair territory. Even though she had one foot in foul territory, it's where the ball is. Clearly a fair ball. Partain swings at the high one. for three for Partain. Facing an 0-2 count against Morgan Wright. Ground ball, backhander, no play by Clark, and another run scores. Mackin is in to make it 6 nothing. We see Minnesota do it with the Short game, bunts and slaps. We see him do it with the long ball and home runs. And how about just a base hit up the middle by Partain? Clark hustles over and tries to catch Lindemann. You see Mackin scores easy after hitting the double. They just can score in a variety of ways and they keep attacking. One through nine in the lineup. Sydney Dwyer with one more at bat. Three home runs today. Two in the semis. And one here in the fifth. Your number six hitter in this lineup. He's seeing the ball so well today, driving the ball with power. Some towering home runs.
the 3-0. And a four-pitch walk. Loads the bases. Yeah, it's tough to win any game. When your pitching staff's giving up double-digit walks. Very uncharacteristically high number for the entire Ohio State staff. And that just allows a great hitting lineup. Third in the country in batting averages, Minnesota. Just more opportunities to score. That's why Ohio State finds themselves down six runs. First pitch strike to Gronewagen. Minnesota's new all-time strikeout leader. Trying to avoid the strikeout herself. Now at any moment, Sarah Gronewagen also has home run power. Certainly hasn't been able to get on track much in this Big Ten tournament, at least on offense, she certainly has in the circle. Two home runs on the year. That one's a ground ball. Emily Clark handles it easily. Ohio State, their championship hopes. Down to now its final three outs as Grona Wagon will take the circle for the final time in her Big Ten career. Minnesota had to beat Northwestern and Illinois to get here, Ohio State jumped out to an early lead in the quarters against Wisconsin. And then it was a little bit of a nail biter against Michigan State if they fended off a third straight comeback by the Spartans in this Big Ten tournament. Sure Recapping the career for Sarah Gronewagen, now Minnesota's all time strikeout leader. Officially past Sarah Moulton in the sixth. Round ball to the first batter, Alex Bay. Minnesota two outs away from a championship. They've been such a fun team to watch this season. Talk about carrying some momentum into the NCAA tournament or Big Ten regular season championship. Very close, two outs away here from winning the Big Ten tournament championship. Jessica Allister said, if we felt like we were good enough, we could beat anyone in the previous years. But we also felt like we had to be perfect. We don't feel like we have to be perfect this year. Yeah. Lily Piper with a swing in the miss. Talk a lot about playing with intensity, but also intent. One hopper, diving stop on throw on the knees, but the play can't be made in time by Arneson. A good effort there by Arneson. Lays out for that ball and knocks it down. Doesn't, has a lot of spin on it. Piper gets it off the end of the bat. Arneson tries to catch it, but still gives her best out to throw out Piper, but too much speed from Piper. And the second hit against Sarah Gronewagen, given to Piper. The first hit came to this batter, Emily Clark. The single in the fifth. Sarah Gronewagen finds herself ahead in the count. It's a place that she has lived her entire career. And certainly the last two years in a Minnesota uniform, always working from ahead. It 
doesn't let the weather affect her, doesn't let the uh, strike zone affect her, defense affect her. She just does her thing, does it to the best of her abilities, and focuses one pitch at a time. Another strikeout. Yeah, the runner, first base, Clark, is out. You know, drop third strike. Certainly, certainly Piper can advance on that and does. Ball in the dirt. Lindemann wisely knows the rule. Able to drop third strike unless their first base is occupied. It was occupied, so Clark is out, but Piper advances on the ball in the dirt. And so now it comes down to Taylor White. Off the glove of Lindemann. And Piper moving all the way over to third. You know, we wondered how Minnesota would handle being the number one seed for the first time. It's different pressures when you come in. They've, they've come into this Big Ten tournament, have been champions, but they've never come in as the number one seed and the favorite. They certainly have handled it very well. Strike call, now two strikes on White. She's still alive. Now Minnesota has a lot of fans here in attendance. They are on their feet, stomping those feet, clapping their hands. You can feel another championship. Connor Wagon ends it her way. Minnesota is the best in the Big Ten in 2017. And they get it done. Bidding way to end on a Sarah Gronawagen strikeout. The offense puts up a lot of runs on the board. All Minnesota knows how to do this season is win. Here comes the strikeout. Of course it's the strikeout, but this time it's up in the zone. She and Kendall Lindemann excited, as are her teammates. What a Big Ten career for Sarah Gronawagen. And what a Big Ten season for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Well, they are all smiles, and they should be. They are having an outstanding season. Win the Big Ten regular season championship, now the tournament championship. Talk about momentum going into next weekend. 12 strikeouts in the game. Another trophy lifted for Gronawagen and the Gophers. And a trophy lifted in the Jessica Allister bath, ice bath. This senior class of Sam Mackin and Sarah Gronawagen. Inherited Tori Finucane, the transfer from Missouri, but Mackin and Gronawagen won three of the four Big Ten Tournament Championships. Just so impressed with what Coach Allister and her entire team has been able to do. So let's bring in the championship head coach, Jessica Allister. What impressed you about this tournament run the most? 
<laughs> there's a lot of different things, you know. Um, obviously, we found a couple different ways to win. The Northwestern game was hard. Um, it was ugly, but we kept going. Um, you know, we stuck with it earlier today um, against Illinois, who's a good team. And then today, just sticking with it against good pitchers. Sydney Dwyer coming up with big hit after big hit. Um, Kendall Lindemann being patient, taking her, um, taking her walks and coming up with big hits as well. And then uh, Sarah Gronwagen was just unbelievable. I mean, Ohio State, that's a good hitting team. Um, and she was, she was great to me. Coach, two-part question. First, I want to know how that championship ice bath felt. And secondly, why has this team, Wonderful. And especially, especially that senior class, been able to win so many championships? And uh, we're getting a good look at it. You can't see it right now, Jess, but we got a good look at it. It did feel wonderful, I'm sure, on the ice bath. But <laughs> yes. what, what, what's so special about this team and their ability to keep winning and winning championships? Well, I think they believe they're going to win. I think every time we step onto the field, we believe we're going to win. Um, and, you know, we got a couple different ways to do it. And um, we've won in a million different ways. But uh, they're tough. Um, they love each other. Um, and, and they're competitive and they're good. So um, it's, it's been wonderful. You have three seniors. And you inherited Tori Finnegan, or really the transfer from Missouri. I want you to specifically talk about Sam Mackin and Sarah Gronawagen. Now, as freshmen, they won a Big Ten Tournament Championship, and now they've won three in their career. How have they helped to establish a winning culture under your tutelage? Well, they're just competitive. You know, I think that's, I keep saying that, but that's, that's all, I, all I can say. You know, they, they want to be on the field when uh, it's big. They want to be in the box. They want to be in the circle. Um, and they, they believe they can do it. So they believe in themselves. They work their tails off. They're great teammates. Um, and it's just great to see it all paying off for them. Well, the 2017 championship is yours. The regular season and now the tournament title. Congrats. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. T-shirts are on and the championship hats are on. And the selfies are out. Can they get everyone in there? Well, I think they're missing two people right there. Their, their star pitcher, Sarah Gronawagen and Jess Allister. I'm sure they'll find a way in some of those pictures. Twelve strikeouts for Sarah Gronawagen. Now Minnesota's all-time strikeout leader. You got the championship T-shirt on and the championship hat. Wait, you you just reacted. You didn't know you got the I record, had no did idea. you? I no idea, so thanks for letting me know. <laughs> well, you're cool. welcome. Um, well, now that you know, what does that mean? Um, I mean, it's it's awesome. Um, we have we have um, a history of tremendous pitchers, Sarah Moulton, my coach, Coach Ritter. Um, it's, it's an honor to be that leader, but I mean, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get this team to win, and in, back in the dugout. So um, it's an honor, but at the same time, it, this was a great win, and that's what's more important. Sarah, we'll talk in a minute a little more about your pitching as we're we're watching a few of your strikeouts. Just so, such an impressive performance. I really want to know about your steal of third base and the conversation you had with Coach Allister once you got over there. Yeah. Um, uh, well, she said good job. I mean, anytime you steal a base is a good job. But um, I think I would have been pretty dead if I went back to two. So it was either get dead or go to three. So I, I'm lucky I went in my favor. Sarah, Ohio State is a good power hitting team. They have really good offensive numbers and they have all year long. So how did you try to attack them tonight? I think that um, just, again, a mix of my pitches. I think that um, they did a really good job at the beginning of the game, just squaring up the ball. Um, my D had a really good, um, they had good plays behind me. So um, just as the game went on, just making those pitches better. So getting them more on the corner and getting them um, more out of the zone so they don't square up the ball as much. So um, they're a great team. That's the first time I've pitched against them um, ever, I think. So, um, I mean, it's a great feeling to have a win against that good team. Well, turn around and sing with the rest of your teammates. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm not singing on TV. <laughs> You're not getting that out of me, ladies. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. They enjoy each other, you can tell. Oh, you know, it's always fun to win. There she goes, now she's jumping in. And uh, it's always fun to win. It's even more fun to win a championship. Minnesota deserves all the smiles. One final player to talk to. Talk to the head coach, the star pitcher, 
and the hot hitter for this tournament, Sydney Dwyer. Sydney, what were you seeing at the plate, and especially today, the semifinals and the finals? You know, I don't really know. I just, I was having so much fun today. And I think just going up to the plate, having fun. Um, today was hard. And so I think just it being hard made it that much more fun and that much easier to see the ball. Well, Sydney's shifting gears just a little bit to the defensive side of the ball. Of course, your offense, the story as we watch some of your towering home runs right now. What's it like to play behind Sarah Gronewagen as a teammate? Uh, it, it's amazing. I think when you have that presence on the mound, I think as, as a defense, it just makes you that much more elevated and then coming in the dugout wanting to score runs behind her. All right, well, congrats on the championship. Enjoy it. Thank you, thank you. That'll wrap up our coverage of the Big Ten softball season. Minnesota, the clear cut champion this well, year. Absolutely were. Just the amount of wins they've earned this season in the Big Ten and overall have earned the Big Ten Championship regular season and tournament with a balanced attack on all facets of the game. That'll wrap up our tournament coverage. Want to thank our producers, Jim Ressler and Brian Carter, our directors, Andrew Greathouse, Andrew Blaustein, of course, Jenny Ritter and Dean Linke, Carol Bruggeman, Lisa Byington, our wonderful BTN crew that worked all week through 11 games. Minnesota, your 2017 Big Ten Tournament champs. Thank you.